Last week, I unboxed what might just be the best two-in-one to come out here in 2020. Yes, I'm talking about the HP Spectre X360 14. It's the two-in-one with a 13.5 inch display, three to two aspect ratio. You can get it with an OLED display, which is the one I have, or you can get it with a full HD IPS panel to give you better battery life. Of course, that will have a lower resolution than what the OLED has to offer. I've been using it for the past week, putting it through its paces. I've been testing the battery life. I've been testing performance. I got the metrics for the display. And the bottom line is I've been blown away. This is one excellent two-in-one. I'm going to tell you why I think this might be the best of 2020. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the HP Spectre X360 14. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. Make sure you follow me on my social media, especially Twitter and Instagram. It's on those platforms I post a lot of the updates. And why not check out my Discord server? It's a great place for us to hang out and talk tech. Link will be in the description below. And today's video is brought to you by all the members who contributed this month to the channel. If you want to become a member, hit that join button below. And finally, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are all my own, and no one is seeing this video before its release. This review unit is on loan from HP, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. For those that didn't see my unboxing video, I'll put the link in the video description below. I cover things there that I won't cover here. I'm gonna focus today on performance, the display, battery life, and my overall impressions of using it for the past week. Now I'm gonna start off with the display and the reason being is because the big deal here is the move to a three to two aspect ratio. Now we saw the HP Spectre X360 13T last year with that 16 to nine aspect ratio. I like this move to the three to two because you're gonna do less scrolling when you're web browsing. You'll show more on the display when you're doing things such as Microsoft Office, email and web browsing. Now this display certainly doesn't disappoint. In fact, it's outstanding. It's a 3000 by 2000 OLED display. Again, three to two aspect ratio you get the really deep blacks the extremely vibrant colors it also has very good color accuracy and it also covers the color gamut really well and here it is next to the HP Spectre X360 13T from last year. This is the one running the Ice Lake processor, that 10th gen from Intel. And as you can see, it has a 16 to nine aspect ratio, a wider display, a shorter display, not as tall as the three to two aspect ratio on the 14 inch. Now, as far as the actual display size, the Spectre X360 14 has 13.5 inch display, even though they call it a 14, as opposed to the 13.3 inch display from the 13T. As you can see, it's a taller display meaning you'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. You will get more to see on the display when it comes to things such as productivity work, Microsoft Office, spreadsheets, and the like. And of course, as you can see here, the big difference between an OLED and IPS panel is pretty evident. You get the really deep blacks, the vibrant colors, as opposed to the IPS display, which is very good in its own right, just not as vibrant or as sharp as that OLED panel. And I know a lot of you wanted to see the difference between the two. Well, here it is. And to be more precise, you're looking at a 13% taller screen on that Spectre 14 as opposed to the 13T. And this is an eye safe display, which means that there's a reduced blue light in this display. And that's going to be good, especially during this pandemic when we're working from home, we're extended periods of time in front of these displays. And with that move to the three to two aspect ratio, we're now looking at a 90.33% screen to body ratio, thinning out the bezels, giving it off a very sleek and modern look. So this is the front-facing camera on the HP Spectre X360, 14-inch, 2-in-1 convertible with that 3 to 2, uh, 3000 by 2000 OLED display. Now, this is a 720p, 30 frames per second webcam. It's an infrared webcam, meaning you can log in with face recognition, with Windows Hello. Uh, good for Zoom, good for Skype. I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below.
And one of the things I love about the Spectre line is the uh, versatility that this convertible gives you. You have the tent mode, as you see there, stand mode, both great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media, things like YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, you get the picture. And of course, using it as a tablet, although not the lightest tablet, but definitely usable, especially with the included pen. Now, as far as the pen, it charges via USB-C, uses the Microsoft Pen Protocol 2.0, and it's great for navigating through the OS, taking notes, sketching out artwork, it all worked well. I covered the ports in my unboxing video. For those that didn't see it, again, check out the link below. But for those that didn't see it, quick recap. On the left side, you get one sole USB-A port. I'm glad to see a USB-A port still here as we approach 2020. Moving over to the right side, micro SD card slot for storage expansion. One of your two Thunderbolt 4 ports, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and your second Thunderbolt 4 port in the corner. Now, these Thunderbolt 4 ports support data, charge, display out. The big deal with Thunderbolt 4, you can drive one 8K monitor or two two 4K monitors. Now, for those wondering whether or not you can upgrade this laptop yourself, the only thing that is user upgradable is the SSD. And as you can see from these reads and writes, uh, pretty decent reads and writes, although it could be a little bit higher in terms of the writes. Not too bad, though. Uh, as far as the RAM, it's soldered into the motherboard, and that's uh, not upgradable to the user. Now, as far as the wireless LAN card and the Bluetooth, that's all soldered in as well, but I've gotten some pretty good connections, decent range as well as regarding that Wi-Fi 6. And and of course, since this is Wi-Fi 6, uh, pretty much future-proof for the foreseeable future. Now, I went over the keyboard layout in the unboxing video. There are a number of changes uh, that I did point out. And for those that didn't see it, the power button has now been moved from the corner into the keyboard itself. You also get a fingerprint scanner moved to the keyboard itself as well. Now, there's also a dedicated key for the camera shutter. That means you can turn off the webcam with a click of a button, and I really like that. There's also the inclusion of a key dedicated for the HP Command Center. So if you want to change the thermal profile on the fly, it gives you the ability to do that. Very convenient. And for those wondering, here's the keyboard layout with this Spectre X360 13. And I absolutely love the keyboard on this. It's one of my favorites as far as a two-in-one convertible is concerned in this ultra portable category. Good key travel, very good tactile feedback, and it's good for extended periods of typing. It also has a very good precision touchpad. It's been super responsive. Two-finger scrolling is buttery smooth, and all the Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised. They did an excellent job on both the keyboard and the touchpad. And for those wondering, here's a comparison as far as size is concerned with the Spectre X360 13. As you can see, the 14 has a taller profile. And here it is next to the HP Spectre X360 15. Now, what's interesting is this is running Intel's 11th gen Tiger Lake processor. And of course, it has the Intel Iris XE graphics that we've seen in the smaller versions of the things such as the XPS 13, as well as the Lenovo Yoga 9i. I'm going to give you my review of this in the next couple of days or so. So stay tuned for that. But for a size comparison, here is the 14 and the 15 inch. And you can see the difference in terms of the footprint. And when it comes to battery life, this has a 66 watt hour battery and the OLED variant got seven hours and two minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 115 nits. If you opt to get the non-OLED LCD IPS panel, expect around 12 hours or so of mixed use. Now that of course will have a resolution of 1920 by 1280, but the OLED panel that I have here with that 3000 by 2000 resolution, not too bad. Now, if you use a dark background or a black background, expect better battery life. That's the key with any OLED display. And if you need to charge this laptop, they include a 65 watt USB-C power adapter in the box, and it takes a little bit less than two hours for a full charge. Not too bad. Now, when it comes to performance, we're looking at the Intel 11th generation processor. It's the Core i7 1165G7. That's the Tiger Lake based on the Intel Evo platform. And as you can see, when you compare it to things such as the Dell XPS 13 2 in 1 or the Lenovo Yoga 9i, very similar performance, although the Yoga 9i 14 is running a little bit better processor. That's the Core i7 1185G7 with a higher clock speed, as you can see, a little bit better performance. But as far as that Intel XE graphics, as far as Intel integrated graphics are concerned a definite step up over last year's intel iris plus graphics very impressive performance out of this definitely playable frame rates with things such as gta 5 the witcher 3 dota 2 i think you get the picture 
Now, when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see how the thermals would handle on this as far as thermal throttling and so forth, I would see that the CPU would ramp up to 4 gigahertz at a core temperature of 95 degrees Celsius for about 15 seconds. Then it would drop down to around 2.1 gigahertz to 3.4 gigahertz and fluctuate between 75 degrees Celsius and 95 degrees Celsius. And here you can see the surface temperatures when it was under stress as well as when it was in idle. And here you can see the surface temperatures when it was idle and when it was put under heavy load. Now, as far as fan noise is concerned, not too bad. They will kick in under heavy load. Not too bad, not too loud, not too obnoxious. And another area I was very impressed with is the speakers. And they're Bang & Olsen speakers. They're quad speakers, meaning there's four of them. And they fill up a room rather nicely. Good volume, good mids, good bass. Very good audio overall. Okay, let's wrap things up here. What do I think about the HP Spectre X360 14 here as we head into 2021? The answer is I freaking love this thing. I think it's pretty amazing. I love the fact that they moved to that three to two aspect ratio. I love the OLED display, 3000 by 2000. It's bright, it's sharp. It's everything you'd want in a display. Now, I love the fact that we're getting good performance out of that Tiger Lake 11th gen processor with the XE graphics. Definitely a step up over last year's Ice Lake with the Intel iris plus graphics i like the fact that this packs a comfortable keyboard good touchpad and i love the fact that it has two thunderbolt four ports a USB A port which i still love to see here as well as a micro sd card slot pen and carrying sleeve are included at no additional cost which is a great touch and it has outstanding battery life especially if you opt for that non-oled display you're going to get really great battery life even with the oled display pretty decent again not quite as good as the ips display now as far as the speakers are concerned i really like them they have the bang and olsen tuned sound sounding really great negatives here ram wireless lan are not upgradable by the user it runs a bit warmer than the spectre x360 13t and this can get a bit pricey but i think hp has a home run here with a very special product on their hands i'm going to give this a score of 94 percent making the hp spectre x360 14t definitely worth your money and it's also my editor's choice for the 13 inch category here for late 2020. So what do you think about this bad boy the HP Spectre X360 14 here for late 2020 and I gotta say one of the best two-in-one convertibles if not the best in the 13 inch category here for late 2020 and I gotta say great looks with the Copper Lux accents around it. Love the Nightfall Black. We've seen that before. The big changes here, of course, the move to the three to two aspect ratio, 3000 by 2000 OLED display on my review unit. Now, if you want better battery life, as I mentioned, get the full HD. That will give you much better battery life, as you saw from the numbers. Although this wasn't too bad, getting around seven hours or so. But if you want to get about 12 hours of mixed use, uh, check out the full HD variant. It's an IPS display, but it's still a very nice display from what I understand. This is an absolutely gorgeous display, 13.5 inch OLED display. As I mentioned, 3000 by 2000 resolution. Uh, it's a bright, crisp display with very vibrant colors, the deep blacks, everything we've come to expect with an OLED panels here. I didn't notice any of the mesh layers that have been plag plaguing other OLED displays in the past. Uh, this seems to be a really nice panel that they've used. The fact of the matter is, it's a great display. Now, as far as performance is concerned, move to the 11th gen Intel processors based on the Evo platform. This is the Tiger Lake. This is the Core i7 1165G7. Pair that with its integrated graphics, the Intel Iris Xe graphics, a definite performance boost over last year's uh, Iris Plus graphics. So you saw from the numbers, you could do gaming, 1080p low settings. But of course, this is not going to be a powerhouse gaming laptop. This is not what it's meant to be. This is meant to be a thin and light ultra portable to take with you on the go. Now, I like the fact that the pen stores or sticks magnetically rather to the side of the device. Not the strongest magnet, but it'll definitely get the job done. Uh, the pen itself is really good. Uh, it's included in the box, which you know I love. They also give you a nice uh, full leather carrying sleeve in the box. And I like the fact that uh, there is no additional cost. So this is a really nice value add in my opinion. 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. Uses the Microsoft Pen Protocol, which is I think based on the Entrick technology. Uh, that means this is like the Surface Pen. Uh, I kind of prefer the 
uh, pen technology from the Wacom AES technology, which we recently saw with something like the Lenovo Yoga 9i or the Dell XPS 13. This is definitely good for artists. If you want to take notes, sketch out artwork, uh, this will get the job done. I've seen it on sale at Best Buy for as low as $12.99 recently. Uh, normal price around $16 to $1,700, depending uh, where you go. But again, if you want that OLED display, I think Best Buy had it for $12.99. I don't know if it's still available right now. Uh, check it out if you haven't done so. Now, this is one of my favorites this year. Uh, I will be doing a special laptop of the year. We'll have the different categories. That's coming up this upcoming week as we approach 2021. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.